we're going to get going. So I'd like to welcome everybody to our webinar, All About Appliances. And uh, today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about appliances in detail and how they affect your kitchen design and how they affect your kitchen layout and all the important decisions that goes into making appliance decisions. So thank you for joining us. Um, a little bit about us and myself. <clears throat> Our business is Granite State Cabinetry. We're located in Bedford, New Hampshire. And since 1996, we have been remodeling people's kitchens and baths and turning their homes into their dreams. So thank you for joining us. Um, we've been in business for over 25 years and we are part of a second generation family ownership, myself and my brother being the second generation. We have a complete in-house talented design and installation project management team. And we also, I'm sorry here, we also have over a hundred years of combined kitchen experience and thousands of projects completed. And these are the valuable team members that make up Granite State Cabinetry. So these are the key employees and we have a whole uh, group about this large of great subcontractors that will come into your house and work and help you design and install and put together the most amazing kitchen or bath that you could ever dream of. So today we're gonna to talk about the wide world of kitchen appliances. So appliances play a major impact in kitchen design and function. Um, and it can actually be very overwhelming. If you, if you break up all the components of kitchen design, you know, appliances is just one small component of it, but uh, impacts greatly into your budget, into your um, design, into your functionality, and into your space. So um, it, it is not easy to navigate that, especially if you've never bought a new appliance in the past 10 years. But we make it easy. Our designers know the appliances really well inside and out, and we are able to um, look at your space, talk to you about how you cook, how, many, how you live, how your family cooks, how your family lives, and really kind of put together our recommendation based on the layout and the size of the space for your appliance shopping list. We don't sell appliances, we only recommend them. So these are just some pictures of uh, our kitchens that we recently completed and we, uh, we take great pride in these and all of them are different appliances. So let's start with the most basic kitchen appliance that everybody has, and that's the refrigerator. So let's break down refrigerators by two different categories. One is a built-in refrigerator, and the other is a freestanding refrigerator. So a built-in refrigerator um, aligns with the kitchen cabinetry. It preserves walking space in front of the unit because it's shallower than a freestanding refrigerator. Um, it requires specifically designed cabinetry to surround it. Um, so it's also considerably more expensive than a freestanding refrigerator, double in case uh, sometimes. Um, the other unique thing about built-in refrigerators is that you can put wood panels on them, whereas freestanding you cannot. So freestanding refrigerators are easy to install. You can buy them virtually anywhere. Um, they require no custom cabinetry because they simply slide into the opening that we leave and it fits into most every kitchen. I would say in terms of what we do, uh, most of our, ki our kitchens, I'd say 60% of them get freestanding refrigerators, 40% get built-in refrigerators. So on the left, we have a, um, a built-in refrigerator with panels, and we call these cabinet panels because they match the panels that are in the kitchen. And on the right is another built-in refrigerator, and that is stainless. So you'll have a decision to make when you, when you choose a built-in refrigerator. And there are many different sizes. They go from 24 inches all the way up to uh, 48 inches. And then you can add columns. You can go to 60 or 72 uh, inches wide. They're enormous um, and they're very custom to what you want to put and organize your refrigeration and also how you're incorporating it into the design of the kitchen. So I'm gonna talk about the freestanding refrigerators now. So freestanding, you'll have a decision to make on whether you're going to purchase a counter depth refrigerator or a full depth refrigerator. So full depth refrigerators 
um, or also known as standard depth refrigerators is on the left. So you can see in that picture that it actually sticks out beyond the countertop by a good six to eight inches. And on the right, we have a counter depth refrigerator and that is a shallow refrigerator. So the only thing that sticks past the countertop is the thickness of the door. And that has to stick out past it so that you can swing the door open and it doesn't bind on the countertop. So you'll have a decision to make when you purchase your freestanding, counter depth or, or full depth. Now, counter depth can help you if you're trying to squeeze in an island and you're looking to pick up some space, counter depth will definitely help you. Um, they are smaller, so if you have a large family, you're not gonna fit as much food. So that's all considerations to make when you're shopping. And, and again, we recommend the, the counter depth or standard depth once the design is done and we're, we're talking to you about your refrigerator size. So here again is a counter, um, a counter depth refrigerator. On the left, that's a great picture. The only thing sticking past the counter is the refrigerator door. This picture, these both these pictures are freestanding full depth refrigerators. So they stick out and you can see the box of the refrigerator sticking past the panel. And in the right picture, same thing sticking out way past the, uh, the end panel. We can order those end panels 30 inches deep to cover the side to make it look more built in and I'll show you later on in the slideshow what that will look like. So under counter refrigeration, so along with your large refrigerator, we also talk about under counter refrigerators because a lot of people like these for anything that could be beverages, it could be produce, it could be drinks, um, wine, beer, uh, milk, they even come in freezer drawers, so it could be ice cream. Um, it, it, you can really supply, put anything in these refrigerators if you feel that you need an additional refrigerator in the kitchen, or in a bar, or in an office, or in a bedroom. We've done them in the bedroom before. So the second most popular, or um, behind the refrigerator, in my opinion, everybody wants the dishwasher. So. The dishwasher um, can come in three different ways. So it's either going to be a stainless front or black, or you're going to put a panel that matches the cabinetry over it. So on the left picture, we have a paneled dishwasher and it blends right into the cabinetry. You won't even know that it's a dishwasher. In the middle, we have the front control dishwasher. So that means that the controls are visible when you shut the door. And then on the right, we have a fully integrated dishwasher, which means when you shut the door, all you see is a stainless panel and you have to open it to touch uh, the buttons and turn it on. Um, they're all great um, options. I would say we do more stainless dishwashers than we do panel dishwashers, but it comes down to personal preference and what the design calls for. Microwaves. Um, pretty much everyone has a microwave. Today, the microwave drawer is number one. We install that in nine kitchens out of 10. Um, people like it because it gets it off of the counter. It gets it um, away from the range. If, um, if you're putting over the range, it gets it off there so you can put something decorative. Uh, it gets it out of a cabinet. Um, so the drawer is definitely in the past five years become the most popular style of microwave for us. And it's nice because you actually get a nice deep drawer below that microwave, which is really helpful. I like it for Tupperware storage. It keeps everything organized. And uh, usually you go in there right after the, after the fridge into the microwave. So it's easy to access. Um, the middle picture is a built-in wall microwave and this is shown above a wall oven. So if you're doing a wall oven, you can opt to do a microwave above it. And that is a drop down microwave handle style. Um, and then over the range microwave. So over the range microwave is very common today and it has been forever. Um, it's a great uh, spot for a microwave if you are in a small kitchen and you're looking for efficiency and, and space saving because you have to put something over your cooktop, over your stove, no matter what. Um, whether it's a hood, a microwave, something needs to be over it. So if you're looking for space in a, you know, to, to free up cabinets or, or countertops, then we always recommend it over the range. 
Um, it kills two birds with one stone. It can get it off the counter and save space, but it can also be that hood that's over your range. Uh, these can be vented outside if you choose, or they can be recirculating inside. So that's a good, I, I, I personally have that in my kitchen right now and I think it functions great. I like the spite, I like the size of it. It's big and um, it works out well. Next, we're gonna talk about ranges. So on the left, we have a slide in range and on the right, we have a freestanding range. So I will explain to you the difference. So a slide in range has no back that comes up that back wall. So all the controls are on the front and it allows you, you to continue your backsplash behind uninterrupted. So it also lips over the um, countertop. So it looks more built in, it looks more custom. They're slightly more expensive, but I would say nine out of 10 people are choosing the slide in range over the freestanding range. Um, the freestanding range has the controls um, in the back they're usually the clock is back there and it, and it goes up about eight inches over the countertop. One thing I'll point out on both of these pictures is they are unique double oven ranges. So this is a new style within the last five years and uh, they've, be, they've become more popular. The one on the left is really nice. Um, that door actually is, the cavity is one cavity, but the door hinges in the middle. So that's a nice feature. Um, and you still get to keep that bottom drawer. On the right, that is true two double ovens. So that's two cavities and you lose the drawer on the bottom. Um, but the top, um, the top small oven is really nice. Uh, it warms up quick, preheats quickly. And if you're just cooking for you know, one or two people and you just need to throw something in there quickly, that's a great option. So I really like the, the double oven ranges. Next, we go to the professional range. So professional ranges, um, they look more commercial. They're more expensive. They're typically all gas, but um, they do have electric ovens, convection ovens. Um, the cooktop, I think Wolf does make an induction range, um, but most of them are gas and they start anywhere from 30 inches wide like the one on the left, and they can go up to 60 inches wide like the one on the right. So the one on the right is literally two 30 inch ranges. Um, the larger you go, the more burners you get. And in some brands, you can opt to customize the top. So you could do a French top, you can do a griddle, um, you can do um, a wok top. Uh, there's a lot of different customization that you can do um, on these professional style ranges. And also price point, they are more expensive than a traditional freestanding or sliding range. Cooktops. So if you choose not to, um, by a range and you're going to um, do a cooktop, you have some decisions to make. So these are either electric or gas and electric can come standard electric or induction. They come anywhere from 12 inches wide up to four feet wide. Most of them that we install are 36 inches wide and that gives you five to six burners on top. The nice thing about a cooktop is that it gives you nice functional storage below so these drawers below um, can hold your pots and pans. And it's, it's a nice look because the countertop wraps in front. So it makes for cleanup nice and simple and easy, um, more custom look. Um, cooktops are a great way to go. If you decide that you're gonna do a cooktop and wall oven versus a range, just be prepared to give up more cabinet space and use more space in your kitchen because now you're dividing one appliance into two or three appliances. So that requires more space, and you're spending more money because you're buying more appliances. So that's a, that's a key, uh, key thing to think about. Range tops. So a range top is basically a range, but without an oven. So the controls are on the front. These are professional style only, and they come anywhere from 30 inches up to 60 inches. And again, you'll have the same options to customize the top. If you want a griddle, double griddle, single griddle, um, French top, you'll be able to do that. Most of these are gas only. I have not really seen an electric range top, um, but the controls are on the front, very commercial looking, very professional, um, expensive, but they give you that space below for storage. So you could do drawers or doors below. So if you're looking for that, um, if you're looking for the double oven 
and you're looking for the commercial range top and the ability to customize, the range top is a great solution. Wall ovens. So wall ovens come in either a single wall oven or a double wall oven. Um, most people who want two ovens will do a double wall oven. Um, we have had people do a single wall oven in addition to a range if they need that second oven. You can put a single wall oven below a countertop. So we've done it in an island. We've done it below a cooktop before. Um, so if, you, if you're looking for that look, it's definitely possible. Wall ovens, um, the nice thing about wall ovens versus a range is they're typically off the ground. So if you're lifting that 20 pound turkey into the oven, you're not bending down to the ground with that turkey. So it's all at waist level. So it makes it really simple to get things in and out. Um, Blue Star makes a great uh, wall oven. I should have put a picture on this. It's got a French door. So you're not dropping the door in front of you and reaching over this hot door. You're just opening the doors and you're just putting the food into the oven without risking burning yourself. So that's a nice feature. Wall ovens are very popular. The steam oven. So steam ovens uh, came out about 10 years ago and they have been slowly gaining popularity. They are smaller than a wall oven. So these are typically 24 inches wide where a wall oven is 30 inches wide. They are also shorter. So if you can imagine, um, these are about the size of a um, microwave, like a built-in microwave. Um, some of them are plumbed, which means that you'll never have to fill it with water and others have a reservoir that you have to fill it with water. So what is a steam oven? A steam oven is basically an oven that cooks much faster um, and it cooks much healthier than a regular dry convection oven. So it's constantly cooking with moisture. So uh, the vegetables and um, meats are coming out really moist and delicious. Um, it also cooks a little bit faster. Um, you don't have to preheat anything. So it's very efficient in that way. Um, it's becoming very popular. These are pricey um, because it's a luxury item, but um, people who have them love them and would, would swear that this is the only oven that they, that they need. Uh, you can bake in it as well. I know that. So steam ovens, something nice to consider. Built-in coffee makers, uh, definitely a luxury item, um, but it is a popular item as well. So if you enjoy coffee and you enjoy um, making these fancy drinks, coffee drinks, then these this is the product for you, especially today. So you don't have to drive out to Starbucks or um, any of your coffee shops, this is the uh, stay at home Starbucks barista in your kitchen. So these are uh, really nice. They can be plumbed or they can have a water reservoir. Um, they're programmable. You can, you can do anything. You can put milk in there. You can put uh, um, all kinds of, um, all kinds of coffee drinks. I'm not a big coffee drinker um, in these types of drinks, but I know people love them. So this one on the left is shown over a steam oven. It's the same width of, of a steam oven. And the one on the right um, is also the same width, 24 inches. These are small and can be built into any cabinetry. A great day like today where it's 95 degrees out and you uh, come home and you wanna mix yourself a nice cold drink, an ice maker is a very nice luxury item to have. Um, these ice makers range um, anywhere um, from price, you know, from, from a few thousand uh, dollars on up. So they are definitely a luxury item. Um, people who like to drink whiskeys and scotches like that crystal clear round ice. Um, and so a lot of people who drink nice drinks like that, like that ice cube. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say you want to um, use this to fill your coolers, but uh, it's a nice, um, nice appliance to have. Ventilation. So ventilation is critical in any kitchen. Um, it's not necessary to vent. So a lot of these um, kitchens that we're remodeling have a microwave and they, they've never vented. But um, it's a good idea to vent and we do recommend venting anytime that it's an option. So the reason why you want to vent, two reasons. You want to get 
uh, the heat out. So if you're, if you're cooking um, on a 60 inch range or a 36 inch range, and it's a gas range, you're producing a lot of heat, a lot of BTUs. So on a hot day, if you have that going and you're cooking, your kitchen is going to heat up and it's gonna cause your air conditioner to run. It's just causing a problem in the house. So you wanna remove that heat. Number two is you wanna remove any, um, any gases that the cooktop is giving off as it's igniting the gas, the propane. So um, there are chemicals in that air and you wanna remove it. Number three is any smells or oils that you're cooking with. Uh, you wanna get that out of the kitchen, out of the air in your house, and you just wanna have a clean air environment in your kitchen. So that, those are the three reasons why you wanna vent. On the left, we have a chimney style hood that's a stainless hood. Um, in, this, in this picture, we're showing the tile going right up to the ceiling, so that's a really nice look. In the middle, we have an island hood. So if you happen to have a cooktop on your island, the hood can come down and cover that, uh, that cooktop over the island. On the far right, we have a stainless under cabinet hood instead of a chimney style hood. And now wood hoods. So wood hoods are cabinet style hoods. So they match your cabinet or they could be a feature of color like the one on the left here. Um, they are custom built to what the designer is looking for or what you're looking for and it's painted similar to the kitchen um, and it's a very classic look and up inside that is a liner and then a blower unit and you purchase a blower unit and we install that and we vent that outside a downdraft so downdrafts are um, kind of like the last resort so we like to use downdrafts um, when we have no other option. Downdrafts don't really work well because they have to turn the air 180 degrees. So it's rising and then you have to turn it down and suck it out. So they're not that great. Um, the one on the left is a pop-up downdraft. It goes behind a cooktop or a range. And then the one on the right is actually a built-in downdraft within the range. So you can purchase a range that has that downdraft. So it sucks the air up and then down. So downdraft ventilation. Oops. So this, um, this kitchen right here shows us, um, it's a good example of the stainless chimney hood, the professional style range, the counter depth refrigerator on the right, and then the stainless dishwasher on the left. So this is, um, a, this is a typical setup, um, and you can see it kind of coordinating all together. This right here is a, another kitchen that we completed, chimney style hood over a gas cooktop, stainless dishwasher on the left, this is a full depth refrigerator on the right. And I'll point out that the wood panel sticks out past the um, countertop by about six inches to cover that full depth refrigerator. So it does look more built in. It's not just a refrigerator sticking out. And then in the back, you see the wall microwave over a wall oven. This, um, this kitchen features a range top with a cabinet style hood over it. And there's a blower unit up inside that. The dishwasher is to the right of the sink. It has a refrigerator, I mean a uh, panel, a wood panel, cabinet panel on it. And then we have a wall microwave over a wall oven in this kitchen. So lots of decisions to make when it comes time to think about appliances. Um, this kitchen is featuring a cooktop on the center island with an island hood. This kitchen has two refrigerators side by side and two freezer drawers. This kitchen has two dishwashers and this kitchen has two ovens. It also has two sinks. So two of everything. 
This is actually a kosher kitchen that I designed for a family. So that's why there's two of everything. So um, that wraps up my quick talk on appliances. Um, I would recommend anybody that's interested in talking more to me or, or any of our teammate, teammates here to um, go to our website. This is a screenshot of our website here. It's gscabinetry.com and right on the homepage, you can click that button to book a virtual consultation. And we also offer free virtual workshops, which you're attending right now. So thank you very much. Um, there's a great deal of information on our website about kitchen and bath remodeling. And if there's any questions that we could ever answer for you, please don't hesitate to call or email us. Um, we're here and we would love to have the uh, chance to speak with you guys. So without further ado, I would like to see if there's any questions or comments that you guys have. I'll check that right now and uh, say thank you very much for attending and we will see you on the next webinar. Thank you very much.